And hello. This process has been streamlined. Normally it takes much longer for a vaccine to be approved, but Health Canada officials insist safety has not been compromised. The company that makes the vaccine must still monitor Canadians for side effects. That's one big condition on the approval today. Lloyd? So Graham, what happened here? Because the last we heard, it was still going to be another few weeks before approvals would go out. What changed? <clears throat> Well, I, I think we were being given the worst case scenario, Lloyd. It's the classic example of under promising and over performing. Keep in mind, some people will still get the vaccine well into November, but it is earlier than expected. I think we were being given sort of the worst case that might happen sort of. once the vaccine rolled out. Well, I better have the good news quickly. Thank you, Graham. Thank you. Glad we came to a conclusion on that. The seasonal flu vaccine. Now that it's been approved for use, the question is, how many people will decide to get it? Health officials say it's safe and effective based on European studies. But clinical testing in Canada has just begun, and in the court of public opinion, the jury is still out. CTV's medical specialist, Avis Favreau, takes a closer look at the facts and the fears surrounding the H1N1 vaccine. Not until the, the, you said the first week of November? For the general public, eh? Uh, we were just watching the news and it said on October 27th from 3.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. they're going to be at St. Thomas Aquinas Secondary School and South London Community Centre, both for, uh, I'm not sure, maybe that's just for the senior citizens, like you say. Maybe that's just a special clinic for them. What's your name again? Teresa. Uh, are you in Toronto or? No. You are in London. Excellent. Yeah, like you know now, I'm from Ottawa. And um, I'm not really actually that concerned about getting the, the shot. Dawn Fantetti is among the first Canadians to get a swine flu shot. Oh. As part of a study of the vaccine's ability to boost immunity uh -huh. against the H1N1 virus. I think it's a good thing. Hopefully it'll protect me. Clinical trials are just getting started in sites across Canada to supplement data from other studies that suggests this vaccine offers over 90% immunity for healthy adults aged 18 to 64. And we're trying to get everything out yesterday. With the vaccine now headed for the arms of Canadians starting in the next few days, many are still unsure if they want it, like Emma Nichols, mother of three. I'm confused because I think the information that's coming out is still a little bit mixed. People Yay. who surveyed were clearly divided among those who will get it. I probably will because of my job, because I'm in close contact with the public all the time. I think. I probably will, yeah. Doctors say that we have all have to take it, no? And others who say they won't. <laughs> At this point, no. I am Don't do the worry. off because <clears throat> I want to get more information. So at this point, I'm just going to wait and see and wait till some of the preliminary stuff comes out and then I'll decide. Thanks, but no thanks. The swine flu just seems too new and not tested well enough, and I don't want to be, you know, a guinea pig. Even some doctors are confused. And I think many physicians in a position to promote the vaccine are having hesitation because they don't feel they have enough safety data to stand on a table and say, everybody must do this right now. Yeah. In the coming weeks, researchers hope to have data from the Canadian-run studies to reassure those who can't run studies on the people whether get the vaccine or not. What the hell? Thank you, Avis. CDB yeah, let's, Avis let's get all the studies back. I'm more concerned about making sure that I avoid these areas where they're going to be giving out the shot because uh, I've been doing a little bit of research on uh, how this, this vaccine, the vaccine itself, is uh, much more detrimental than anything else. Did you know that there's no autism in the Amish? Medical consultant, Dr. Barlow's a girl. Dr. Barlow, obviously there are a lot of concerns out there about this vaccine. Are they legitimate? Well, we don't have as much safety data as we might like. We do have data on the use of adjuvant from European studies from adults all the way of down course. to age three that does inform us. The bottom line is, is that we will be monitoring safety and monitoring outcome as time moves forward. Now, we have a young expected mother here in our newsroom who said to me today, no way am I taking chances in getting this vaccine. Yay! What do you say to her and to others like her? Well, I think it's important to understand the risk associated with pregnancy and the potential benefit of the vaccine. So, pregnant women after 20 weeks in the second half of their pregnancy are much more at risk than the general population to have adverse outcome, meaning illness, even death, 
and an adverse outcome for their unborn child. So it's important to make that informed decision before you just say, no, I don't want to have that vaccine. And again, the time frame with the greatest risk? After the second half of pregnancy, so week 20 and later. I wonder what people over 65 who seem to be, so far at least, immune. In that particular group, we are encouraging the use of the seasonal flu vaccine, and that's been out now, and it has been given. For individuals over the age of 65, there is no guarantee, although there is seems to be more than immunity. If you want to have the vaccine, as it's been said, all Canadians can have the vaccine, but it will happen later in sequencing with those high-risk groups, including pregnant women, first being targeted. All right, thank you, Dr. Barnes. Targeted. Thank you, targeted? You've got to love the analogy. And if you would like targeted. more information about when and where the vaccine will be available in your community, you can find it <laughs> on our website at cdd.ca. Oh, you can find it there. Well, this has been a tension building. Maybe you can become a target as well. Isn't that amazing, eh? Thank you so much for your time. I'm not going to waste any more of it. No, 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 no. In fact, I, I appreciate it that, uh, that you don't know because... Uh, if anybody's calling up asking about that, I'd I'd also, uh, you know, love it if you uh, if you knew the truth and didn't pass on what you've necessarily been hearing from all these different uh, sources that might be uh, influenced by other sources that are influenced by other sources. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. Have a great day. Bye. Well, Sue, that is standard procedure whenever a suspect dies. Now we are here at the bank parking lot where this all went down. Take a look. Some of the markings where this happened are still on the ground. But perhaps most important for investigators is the eyewitness testimony of people who saw it all go down across the street. It was it was pretty horrific. I would never want to see it again. Sharon Kirby was at Sluggos chatting with friends when she saw a man on a bike. And the guy was going pretty fast, as fast as he could on his bike. She says Officer R tried shooting a taser from his car, but he missed. Then the biker went into the parking lot of a vacant bank. The guy on the bike swerved into the bank parking lot that was right there. Uh, kind of jumped off his bike or half stumbled. He took about two steps and the cop car was so close to him that it, I guess, it sort of nudged him and then he fell down completely and the car just completely ran over him and then Shut you. Listen to it. Uh.